The Michelson-Morley experiment is based on an ingenious interferometer which allows very high precision measurements of all sorts. The idea is to send a light ray on a beam splitter uh, which reflects half of the incoming light and let half of it go through. Then each uh, uh, transmitted and reflected light rays are themselves reflected on a mirror, come back and again half of each ray is transmitted and half is reflected. Finally a detector is detecting uh, the light rays coming uh, from both paths. Whether you describe uh, the light rays as um, photons or as wave, um, you have an amplitude uh, which is summed for these two paths and which can interfere coherently or destructively depending on the difference of the phase associated to each of the paths. Of course, if the length um, between the mirror and the beam splitter is the same for both paths and if the light rays are exactly parallel then both phases will be the same and we will have constructive interference. However, it is enough to have a small angle um, in uh, the uh, incidence uh, on the mirror uh, in order to have uh, destructive interference as well. So what we will see in the detector um, along the direction X is an interference pattern where we have constrictive interference and destructive interference when we plot the intensity of light as function of X. In fact it doesn't really matter if the distances L are slightly different because we can always adjust uh, the position of the mirrors in order to have constructive interference for x equals zero. So how can we use such an interferometer to measure speed of light? Imagine the experiment is made in an inertial frame which is moving with respect to the hypothetical ether. Therefore, it is like having the ether moving uh, with some vector velocity v. So the idea is the same as for the propagation of sound between Alice and Bob's uh, who were moving through the air. Except that now this is not um, sound but light which is uh, moving and propagating between Alice and Bob. And what plays the role of Alice in the michelson morley experiment is the beam splitter and what plays the role of Bob um, is uh, the mirror and of course we have two possible um, positions for the mirror uh, that is two possible positions for Bob which we call um, Bob perpendicular and Bob parallel with respect to the velocity through the ether. If there was such a thing as the ether um, allowing light to propagate, we would expect a slightly longer time for the propagation of the photons along the path 2, which is um, parallel to ether, than along the path 1, which is perpendicular. And we already calculated this difference of time in the case of sound where c is the speed of light. Of course, this uh, expression is only valid uh, when v is uh, much smaller than c, which is uh, m most of the time the case because the speed of light is very large. And we know that the phase associated with the path is proportional to the time of propagation. So if we have a difference of time between paths 1 and paths 2, therefore we will have a difference of phase between these two paths. This means that instead of a constructive interference at x equals zero, uh, the intensity of light will be uh, s smaller than that. And in fact, the figure, the interference pattern will be shifted either to the right or to the left. 
and the experiment will be sensitive to such a shift uh, along x providing that the uh, distance L is large enough. So uh, in the case of the michelson morley experiment to measure a uh, change in speed of light through the ether, uh, th this distance was of the order of 10 meters. So you have 10 meters between the beam splitter and each of the mirrors. Of course they had no idea what will be the direction of the velocity of the ether. So what they did was to repeat the measurement for different orientation of their interferometer. And what they found is that the interference pattern they measured uh, was independent on the orientation of the interferometer. So their conclusion for the first time they did the experiment was that they were not moving through the ether. So what they did was to wait for six months because then uh, the Earth was having a different vector velocity and of course they would expect that it would move different, differently through the ether. However, when they repeated the experiment six months later, they found exactly the same result. Uh, the um, um, interference pattern uh, was again independent on the orientation of the interferometer. Therefore, the only conclusion uh, which was um, possible and which was uh, made by Einstein uh, was that the ether did not exist.